Welcome back to another Terror Time with Taco Tarantino. Tap in. First and foremost, before I jump into this tear time, I just want to say that I am so excited. Like y'all don't understand my love for Halloween. Like the entire month of October period, I love it. I, I don't know what it is, but I love it here. Oh my God, I love it here. I love this song. The festivities probably will be a little different this year because like everything that's going on. And not even that, now we got this stupid ass election coming up. So, you know, everything's kind of just, everything seemed kind of muffled and like, I don't know, disoriented this fucking month, this the last few days of this month, but it's okay because I'm still enjoying myself. I'm still enjoying the month and the season. I'm not gonna let none of this dumb shit <laughs> ruin my favorite month and favorite time of the year. You dig what I'm saying? It's my favorite fucking day ever. <laughs> I love I love Halloween more than my fucking birthday. I love Halloween. On this Terra Time with Taco Tarantino, we are going to cover the Jameson family disappearance and death let me add that this is one of my favorite <laughs> hey y'all probably like bitch everything is your favorite yes so let me just jump straight into giving you guys like my stance on everything and, and um what i know like always the jameson family consisted of three family members the mom the dad and the daughter bobby sherilyn and six-year-old madison basically y'all this whole case actually gives me the heebie-jeebies this is probably one of the like most scariest cases i've like read about and the reason with that is because i don't like when stuff happens to kids you get what i'm saying like if if you as an adult if you want to be a dumbass and just like end your life okay cool you go do that i don't like when people involve their kids i don't like when people involve strangers kids i, I don't like it because like what what are you doing with that child it is already so scary to me, like the way they were moving throughout the video. And the fact that like, just sitting here and knowing about it and reading about it, and like, it's a six year old involved. I'm just like, oh shit. Like it gives me chills because like, what the fuck? I wonder what that child witnessed. I wonder what, what she knew, what, what was the last few things leading up to like her disappearance and her death. Like, what was she thinking? What, what was she feeling? You get what I'm saying? Anytime anything happens to a child, I put myself in a child's shoes before I put myself in the adult's shoes because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about adults. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's like, we are the world. We are the children. <laughs> like, I don't like when people harm kids. It just makes me so sad. I hate it. I want to destroy anybody who harms a fucking child because I have so many nieces and nephews and I know I will go rogue. <laughs> like, hey, you won't, you won't have to call the National Guard. I will go rogue behind my nieces and nephews. So anytime anything happens to a child, I'm just like, mm, it's given musty. Like, I don't like it. So anyway, so like I said, this case involves a family of three, Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison Jameson. Um, basically, you guys, this family ended up packing up all their belongings. They got in the car. They took their dog as well. And I think they had like about $30,000 in cash. They got in their car. They drove out maybe to the woods, I believe. What the fuck? What the fuck leading up to what the fuck? Like, wh why, what happened? You get what I'm saying? I love some scary shit. But that shit, <laughs> ain't I ain't y'all can't be watching that video. Like, what are they doing? Before I even show you guys the video, let me just explain. Like, the whole video just it just seems like they're just not even here anymore. Like, the way they were moving was like they were in a trance state. You get what I'm saying? Like, like they were being like hypnotized or something. The way they were moving was like somebody was controlling them like on some voodoo doll type shit or it, it once y'all see the video y'all will get what i'm saying they just seemed like they were in a whole like they were just in a trance like in a whole nother state they were moving very like zombified is that a word is zombified a word i think police ended up saying like they were probably using drugs or something but normally when i see people using drugs like when i see videos of people using drugs like they slump like have you ever seen a video of people where they end up like overdosing and you see them like kind of slumping and sliding and they body starts stiffening up and they like, it look like they shutting down, you get what I'm saying? 
this is not how they were moving. They were moving as if somebody was like telling them how to move. Like, now walk forward. Now turn to the left. Now stand there and stare. Have y'all ever seen Paranormal Activity? I think it was the first one. When a girlfriend would get out the bed in the middle of the night and she would just stand over her boyfriend. That's how they were standing in the video. Let me get into this article, but but yeah, like I said, a family of three, the mom, the dad, and a six-year-old daughter, they ended up packing up all their stuff. They took their dog and they had like $30,000 in cash, got in their car, drove, ended up getting out of the car for what? I don't know. Then they went in the woods and they found their remains in the woods. So let's get into this article. On October 8th, 2009, the Jameson family consisting of Bobby Jameson, Sherilyn Jameson, and their six-year-old daughter, Madison Jameson, loaded up their pickup truck, headed into Red Oak, Oklahoma to purchase a plot of land, but were never seen alive again. The truck turned up in Latimer County, about an hour drive from the Jamesons' home. When the police discovered the truck, they saw that Bobby and Sherilyn's cell phones, wallets, Sherilyn's purse, and the family's malnourished dog were all located inside the truck, along with a GPS, a map, and $32,000 in cash. You may not be able to see that video clearly, but I'm just gonna basically explain it to you guys. So the whole video was their CCTV camera footage. Um, basically, I guess it has some cameras set outside, set outside their home. You know, like basically like security cameras, you get what I'm saying? Um, and basically, once the family went missing and they were discovered, like the police basically pulled their, their security camera footage. They saw this family basically moving back and forth from their house in a trance-like state. Um, they also reported that the family made about 20 trips back and forth from their car back into their house. And about 15 of those trips, they did not have nothing in their hand. So first of all, why are you walking back and forth into your house and you're not bringing anything back out. Another report was basically that the family, either either the wife, Sherilyn, or the husband, Bobby, would just stop and stand in a trance-like state for like two minutes tops, and then would go back, walking back and forth into the house. The footage itself is just creepy, is eerie to me. Like I said, when I first saw the footage, it was much more clear than what I just previously uploaded. Um, that's the only footage I could find for you guys, I'm sorry. Maybe if y'all do some digging, y'all will find it. If I actually so happen to find a much more clear video, you already know I'ma link it so you guys can go and see basically what happened before this family drove into the mountains and drove to their death. To give you guys a little bit more clarification on this case, basically the family, they lived in Oklahoma. You, I, I cannot pronounce this. It starts with an E. You, you Falula, Oklahoma, not too sure. I don't, I don't know. They lived in Oklahoma. Um, their bodies were found 30 miles from their home. They were traveling into a mountain range called Red Oak because apparently they were contemplating buying a 40 acre plot of land because they planned to live in a storage shed they had the storage shed already they just wanted to purchase a plot of land to i guess basically move the storage shed out there you get what i'm saying um, on october 8th is basically when they loaded up their pickup truck they got in the truck they headed into the mountains and like i said they were never seen alive again when they weren't heard from for several days the family began to reach out to like law enforcement police or whatever and after eight days of hunting, they found the truck before they found the family. So for eight days of hunting, police located the family's truck and that's when things began to get weird. Like I said, turned up in Latimer County, which was about an hour drive from the Jamesons' home. And they found so much of like their personal belongings in that truck. So basically they found things that you would normally take with you whenever you leave out for the day. I do not care where you are going. You're gonna take your phone and you're gonna take your wallet. I don't care if you're just running downstairs to go to a store. I'm gonna always take my phone and I'm gonna always take my wallet because there is no telling whom or what I could run into, what could happen to me. So whatever happens to Taco, Taco needs to have her ID on her at least. So if anything happens to me, at least they will be able to ID me. Or, you know, if I just need to at least call for help, I'm gonna take my phone, you know what I'm saying? They did not do this in this case. They left their phone, the wife left her purse, the husband left his wallet, they both left their cell phones, they left $32,000 precisely in cash, 
and they left their pet dog in the car. When the police discovered the car, the dog was basically malnourished. Basically, the dog was like in the car, just like starving to death. Um, they said that the truck was in good condition and there was no signs of an accident occurring. The family, like everybody else, um, maybe like the mom, the dad of uh, Bobby and Sherilyn Jameson, like basically like the grandparents of the baby, you know what I'm saying? Um, they were all kind of like just shocked and confused about where that big lump sum of cash would come from. Um, they stated that Bobby and Sherilyn were both on disability at the time of their disappearance, but that it still does not explain the, the large amount of cash that they had. Although the police located the Jameson's truck, their starving dog and other belongings, it would not be until November 16th, 2013 that the Jamesons themselves were found. So this family went missing October 8th, 2009. Their bodies, their remains were not discovered until November 16th, 2013. So on the day that their bodies were discovered, their bodies were actually discovered by some hunters. Um, and basically they ran like the forensic test and like they confirmed that it was the Jameson family. Prior to everything happening, there's basically a crazy backstory. They say that Bobby and Sherilyn were eager to get away from the turmoil in their lives and start over in the mountains. You know, like I mentioned, they plan to buy a 40 acre plot of land and move this, their shed or their shack or whatever it was. They plan to move that onto that 40 acre plot of land, their storage shed, I'm sorry. Neighbors and family members reported that for the most part, the couple kept to themselves, but they were deeply spiritual individuals. Spirituality is not always a positive thing. You get what I'm saying? Um, there can be demons and angels in any religion, any belief, anything you practice, there's always gonna be a good and a bad to it. You get what I'm saying? Um, so basically that's what the neighbors basically said. That wasn't a positive thing in their lives because Bobby and Sherilyn believed their home was being invaded by dark spirits. So they confided in a local pastor about their concerns. Their six-year-old daughter, Madison, strangely had an imaginary friend named Emily. And although it is considered completely normal for a child to have imaginary friends, Sherilyn, the mother, believed Emily was actually a malevolent entity. The mom believed that the little imaginary friend that her six-year-old daughter had was like a bad spirit. Like, she didn't think, you know, this is a normal thing. Like, my child has an imaginary friend. Okay, cool. No. The mama basically thought, like, whoever Madison was talking to was like a bad spirit. It was a ghost, an a evil entity, like just something crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um... So Bobby as well, Bobby, the, the father, the husband, he ended up developing paranoia about the family being haunted by evil. At one point, he asked the pastor if he knew of anywhere he could purchase special bullets to shoot a handful of spirits whom he had said were living on the roof of the family's home. Um, so ba ba before I even continue into this article, you guys, I think that the family believed that they were being haunted. It is a possibility that this family was being haunted. Um, one thing I want to say, myself being a spiritual person, you have to be careful with what you dabbled into. Do not get on out here. <laughs> Don't, hey, I'm telling you, even, even not even with just spirituality, whether you're a Christian, a, a Jew, if you're Catholic, if you're you practice Hinduism, you have to be careful with what you are dabbling into. Like I said, no matter what you believe, no matter what, what your background is, your belief is, there is going to be good and bad in everything. That's life. Good and bad balances each other out. You cannot have the good without the bad. And you cannot have the bad without the good. You know what I'm saying? Just be careful. <laughs> all in all, what I'm trying to say, just be careful with what you dabble into. You get what I'm saying? Um, it, it, anything can become evil you if you put enough energy and focus into something you can conjure up some shit that you did not want to conjure up so you know before i continue i just wanted to say be careful with what the fuck you dabble into so um i basically feel like this family believed they were being haunted they could have been being haunted i don't know we don't see what a lot of other people see um so and and also the, the this whole thing this whole case it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. Like I said, it's eerie. It gives me the heebie-jeebies because I'm not too sure 
like I said, when I saw the CC the CCTV footage, the way that the family was moving, it seemed like they were in a trance state. I don't know about you guys, but I believe in hoodoo. I believe in voodoo. I believe that uh, anybody who's powerful enough, I believe that they can like have control over you if you are not spiritually protected or protected by whom you believe in. You dig what I'm saying? If if you have a weak enough aura, I believe that something negative can take over you you get what i'm saying and make you do shit that you should not be doing so basically possession footage itself the way the family was just moving like i said it looked like they were being hypnotized it looked like they were like in a trance state how they would just walk and then stop and stand there for maybe like three fucking minutes and then continue going back into the house went back and forth in their house about 20 times and sometimes they did not have anything in their hands at all you get what i'm saying um so yeah, let me get back into this article. The police found surveillance video footage from outside the Jameson's home. In it, Bobby and Sherilyn are seen walking back and forth from their house to their truck, loading items in a zombie-like trance. Neither person appears to speak. On the Investigation Discovery series, Disappeared, a policeman interviewed for the show stated that the couple made about 20 trips back and forth and they sometimes weren't carrying anything at all. At times, they stopped and stood in place with a vacant stare on their faces. What the hell is that? What were y'all doing? Like, if I'm packing up to disappear, because you know, it, it happens. I, I, I've i heard stories where people just pack up and just disappear and you never hear from them again. I hear stories of it happening because sometimes people just get fed up with the life that they are currently living and people just want to start over with a fresh slate and go somewhere where nobody knows them or their family or their name, you know what I'm saying? It happens, but let me, let, let Taco put herself in this situation. If you know, I'm I'm just like, look, I'm gonna get up out of Atlanta. I'm tired of Atlanta. I'm tired of the people here. I want a, a whole brand new start. Okay, cool. Packing up, packing up, uh, 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 getting stuff, getting stuff. What would cause me to just stop and just stand there? Like, you know, I may have like stopped and maybe thought like, do I really want to do this? Like, am I really trying to like move to a whole, but do you see how like my mannerisms, like, like I'm going to move as if I'm thinking, you get what I'm saying? Like if if this family was just stopping and having these vacant stares because like dang y'all we really finna just pack up and just like disappear even if that's what they were thinking why are they just standing still so just and then turning like they were moving like like soldiers like fuck yes like <laughs> they were moving like as if they were like in the military like you know how everything in the military is just uniform and it's just goddamn everybody like on the same beat like everything is so in sync they were moving as if like somebody was controlling them you get what i'm saying but now taco taco was in this goddamn position like damn do i really want to just pack up my shit and just move to a whole nother like you get what i'm saying like i'm gonna be like dang do i really want to do this bro do i really want to like just up and just dip like you get what i'm saying like my movements my mannerisms like you'll be able to see that i'm thinking but by, by like my by my the way I'm maneuvering my body, you will be able to see that I may be under stress about this decision. You get what I'm saying? This family, you couldn't tell what the fuck was going on because the way that they were going in and out of their home and coming back to their car and sometimes with nothing in their hand at all. What are you doing? Possession. You get what I'm saying? So. Police reports state that the odd behavior witnessed in the surveillance video suggests that the couple may have been on drugs. But the surveillance video was disturbing for other reasons as well. In it, graffiti can be seen sprayed on the side of their storage container. Sherilyn had told neighbors she believed she was a witch and that these were important self-protective messages she had been spraying on the container herself. A friend of Sherilyn's told the police that she sometimes conducted seances with Sherilyn. Though Sherilyn took them much more seriously than she did. Sherilyn had written odd messages on a storage container about her black cats being poisoned as she believed that someone from the neighborhood had killed her cats and witches did not like it when their cats were killed. As you can imagine, Sherilyn's neighbors found the behavior extremely off-putting and they avoided the Jameson family. Just like, nah, like, a hey, she, a hey, Sherilyn, y'all talk to Sherilyn? Shawty keep talking about pfft, Diablo. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, you, you acting in such a manner, of course your neighbors are gonna be like, 
I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. You get what I'm saying? Like maybe, like I said, I, 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 ain't, I ain't never been possessed, obviously. <laughs> like who's just like, who gets possessed and then lives to tell about it, you get what I'm saying? I don't think any of us, e even you watching, can basically speak from like what a possession feels like. The way they portray possessions in scary movies is always, they break in they back, they head twist and they throwing up pissing on themselves they cursing they doing all types of crazy shit you get what i'm saying maybe though maybe that's not even like the only level of a possession maybe maybe this family maybe the father the father and the mother were possessed and maybe that explains their trance like movements maybe that explains why the mama would just she was into all this witchcraft and seances and oh i spray painted this on our storage shed to keep bad spirits bad entities away maybe the the daughter honestly did just have a simple imaginary best friend like she's a child the kids always gonna talk to themselves i'm an adult and i still talk to myself you get what i'm saying maybe the daughter really just had maybe she really just had like just a, a innocent little imaginary friend but the parents were just so far gone in in their own shit that they was like no emily is a demon and we gotta get the hell up out this house and the daddy just in bed like yeah bro because it's demons on the roof like but why where is all this coming from you get what i'm saying and they want to blame drugs I don't think drugs would have any, I, I don't know. I, I don't do drugs. So I can't tell you what type of side effects drugs would have. All I know is weed just make me hungry. But <laughs> I don't know what, like, I don't know what the side effects would be. And my thing is, if the family was haunted and like the dad, the dad asked the, the pastor or the priest, I'm sorry, for special bullets so that he could shoot at Dean. Like, I don't know you guys, I don't know. The family ended up disappearing October 8th, 2009, their bodies were not found until November 16th, 2013. And um, like I said, when they, when they discovered the family's car, the car was in good condition. It didn't seem like they had been like in a, maybe a car accident. So they decided to get out and walk the rest of the way. No, the truck was good. And inside that truck, they found $32,000 in cash, their cell phones, their purse, their wallet. And they ended up, you know years later finding the family's remains it's a lot of theories surrounding this this case of the jameson family um one of the theories is that they were maybe members of a satanic cult I, the way the mama was acting the way the daddy was talking maybe you get what i'm saying it's a lot of hey it's a lot of stuff out here we do not know about and it's a lot of stuff out here that we don't know that certain people are a part of you get what i'm saying um another theory was that they were in some sort of spiritual warfare so maybe you know you know how people always say man i'm fighting demons boy if you gay just say that <laughs> so you know some people another theory was that they were in a spiritual warfare so maybe they were fighting demons like i said we don't know what people go through we don't know what people see um and another theory was that it was a meth deal going wrong so basically they kind of fit like they said they believe that the parents were on drugs which is why they were moving in such a trance like hyperactive state so they're thinking you know maybe they was on their way out to a drug deal and y'all know hey thirty two thousand in cash that's that's big drug money you get what i'm saying big drugs like what are you like you ain't finna take thirty two thousand dollars to go buy weed like no <laughs> 32 32,000 in cash you doing something large you are moving and maneuvering something heavy you get what i'm saying so meth cocaine i don't know i don't do drugs you know heroin i don't know how much this stuff costs you get what i'm saying Thirty-two thousand. do you know how many kilos you could purchase with thirty-two thousand? so they're basically saying that maybe this was a drug deal going bad which is why the whole family ended up getting killed but the thing with that if this was a drug deal going wrong why didn't they take the money like whoever they went to meet if they did go meet somebody if they were meeting somebody for drugs why didn't that person after they killed the family why didn't you take the money you left thirty two thousand dollars in a truck crazy man i would have cleaned that truck out another theory is that bobby's dad killed the family yes the father's father killed the family um bobby and Sherilyn filed a protective order against him 
claiming that he threatened to kill Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison over some business dealings. Um, I'm not too sure what those business dealings are. I will post the article. So if you if you are interested in that, you can look a little bit deeper into that. Um, another theory is a kidnapping plot. Maybe they were trying to stage a kidnapping with little Madison. You know, people are crazy. People sell their children every day. You get what I'm saying? A lot of kids don't even go missing. A lot of kids don't even get kidnapped. A lot of kids are given away by their parents. Um, human trafficking is real. Sex trafficking is real. And really, the biggest theory is a murder-suicide. So either this family was just like, Psh, whatever. And already dealing with like their mental health and, and like their mental state and the stuff that they were speak about and the stuff that they say they were like enduring and going through. Who's to say, you know what I'm saying? Like the mama talking about she see demons, the daddy talking about he gonna shoot the demons. Who's to say they probably didn't get so deep into that and just so unhealthy and like scaring themselves to the point where they was just like, the only way out of this shit is if we just kill ourselves. So who's to say that they didn't just like go up into the mountains? They probably took the dog for comfort for the little girl. Because you no know, little kid not gonna really understand what's happening. Like little kid just gonna go wherever the parents tell them. Maybe they brought the dog along for comfort for the little girl. They got out in the woods and the daddy just boop, boop, boop. So I don't know you guys. Like I said, this is one of my favorite unsolved murder, deaths, disappearances, mysteries. Um, it is called the Jameson family. I will link the article. I will also link, maybe if I find a clearer video for you guys, I will link the video. I'm sorry that that video looked like we watching fucking Minecraft. I, mean, I don't know. That's all I could find. Yeah, that was it for this segment of Terror Time with Taco Tarantino. See you guys next week because I enjoy doing this segment so much. I'm not going to stop it. So, <laughs> you know, Terra Time with Taco Tarantino is going to continue. Although spooky season is coming to an end, I will continue to do these Terra Times because I enjoy them and you guys enjoy them. And you guys are asking like, please keep going after October. And I was like, yeah, because these shits be good. So see y'all next week.